everyone. Thanks for being with me. I hope you're having a good week. I'm Elizabeth Alfano, and it's the Plant-Based Business Hour. I like to start this show by reminding everyone, as we see in COVID times, if we want a safe and secure future, we need a safe and secure food supply, and that's plant-based foods. But is a safe and secure food supply enough? Maybe we also need a healthy food supply. Americans are obese more than any other country at an obscene rate. I want to bring in Dr. Nadia Pinavaya, who is the founder of Plantable. Dr. Nadia, thank you for being with me. Hello, Elizabeth. It's such an honor and a pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. My pleasure. Great to have you with me. So let's talk a little bit about the Plantable Meal Delivery Service and why it is so different than any other meal delivery service because it's really more of a healthcare system. Tell me about plant based or plant um, plantable. Sorry. Um, well, I started it really driven by health concerns. So uh, sure. my background is somewhat tragic. It's always a bit depressing when I start this off, but my father died when I was very young and then my mother mm -hmm. died of cancer. And about five years ago, my mother-in-law was diagnosed with kidney cancer and I thought, oh gosh, not again. And so I started reading about food and nutrition, looking for a silver bullet to go alongside this chemotherapy. And I discovered how, just how, integral our diet is to our health. I understood that um, a calorie restrictive diet was not the solution, um, but rather it was to switch what we eat. So to adopt and embrace a plant-centric lifestyle, a plant-based lifestyle, nutrient-dense lifestyle. But I also learned at the same time of the addiction and the dependency that we have to process food and sugar and refined grains. And I thought I was going crazy. And so Plantable was the, was, the, was the solution to that. And it's really the coming together of nutrient-dense meals. So we're making that very easy, but they're designed to be delicious and really filling, satiating alongside an education and coaching platform to bring people into this experience. 28 days, remarkable how they feel. And then give them the tools to carry on in this lifestyle. So yes, we deliver meals, but it's really just a part of the program in order to transfer people's life and have them experience what plant-based eating does. Well, I want to give people an idea of really what you do. So here is my, oh, my, word. Uh, <laughs> yes, my plantable uh, bag that came and I had all of these great meals. I'll just pull out a couple so that people can see. Um, here I had the quintessential quinoa quiche which is, you can see Ooh, there, which is so one. great. Yeah. Yes, I, and I can pick all of the ones myself. I had um, eggplant. I'm a huge eggplant person. Eggplant sugo, oh. which is so great. And I threw it over green lentils. I just want people to understand some of the kinds of things that they can get. Artichoke cakes, which is so great. So I did this program for one week because I was feeling that COVID had me eating too much at home. Maybe some of you know what I'm talking <laughs> a lot of about. A lot of baking. A lot on, of yeah. baking and a lot of wine. So I decided <laughs> that I was going to try these meals. And I just want to give you an example. So here is um, Mexican artichoke flats. Let's see that you can get in there. Oh, my gosh. So this is what I was going to have for lunch Lovely. today. And I'm going to dig in um, and tell everybody how it is. You can see right there what's so great about this, and we'll get into this. You see right there, you can see corn and artichokes and spinach, I think. So very much a whole food, plant-based diet, diet, correct? And, and that, absolutely. And so and what's behind every meal, as I, as I kind of mentioned, is we want to make sure there's enough plant-based protein for satiety, um, that the meals are balanced across across the macronutrients. So carbohydrates are not the enemy, but we don't have any refined carbohydrates. Um, it's only whole grains. Um, and so lots of whole grains, lots of vegetables. It's filled like whenever we can, it's like, let's add some more kale, let's add some more spinach. And so we're really just taking away the brain power at the beginning. Because if you do want to make a change, sometimes it's overwhelming and, and, and behavior change is hard. So our whole thesis is, look, we've got your back for seven days or 28 days. And, and maybe we'll start to talk about kind of the results of the clinical trials that we're working on. Definitely. But even within 28 days, um, it's incredible what the body does. You reverse pre-diabetes in 28 days. We reverse type 2 diabetes in three months. We take people off statins, reduce their cholesterol, their blood pressure, just 
visually and facially as well people after a couple of weeks they you get stopped in the street and your friends say what are you doing you know yes. you look amazing. Well, you're aging beautiful. backwards that's right that's right so you know when i first started this company i'd done all this learning i i come from a science background i'm a very geeky phd in quantum chemistry um and i started to get into the biochemistry of the body and the and acad academic studies and so I'd done all this reading and I thought, well, let's really put it to the test. And mm -hmm. so when we were even starting the company, we started this pilot, we did this pilot trial and I had people take blood work beginning and end and record their kind of measurements, their weight loss. And then with those, I had, I was blown away. And, and I said, well, I need to start the company here because this is incredible and it really works. And if people go into this, if they're coming from a, traditional diet, even a healthy traditional diet, mm -hmm. but they experience just for seven days that fully immersive plant-based eating, it's very difficult to go back. You know, you, 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 you want to carry on staying in that fashion. So there's so much to unpack there. First of all, you're talking about trying a whole foods plant-based diet perhaps for the first time. I think for a lot of people, conceptually, they think, well, it's not going to taste good. And um, clearly what has to happen for people to stick with it if you're talking about behavioral change then it has to be easy and convenient it has to be affordable and it has to be delicious and and that's really where you're coming together on all three of those fronts but you're really in addition to that because i think there are, you know some other meal delivery services let's say that do that in addition you're really coming together with a health perspective to help people change not only their behavior but also exact results so let me bring up some images here so that we can see that first maybe i'll start with the basics we'll take a step back just how sick is america let's look at this um hold on let me get rid of this for a second so health warning according to the um hwo that the each Lancet commissioned 60,000 scientists and off the record, the Surgeon General's number one threat is food. But of course, it's not yes. all food. What we're really talking about is the Western diet. So you look at some of these statistics, 60% uh, the of Americans have chronic illness, many get cancer, 70% of America is obese. And obviously, you can't be healthy and obese at the same time. And it is this obesity that often leads to diabetes as you know, obviously heart disease, chronic diseases. So um, right. just we have as a nation so much work to do here, but quite frankly, we're out of the habit. We don't know how to cook. We yeah. don't know how to eat anymore. Basic right. nutrition, even for doctors, isn't something that they get in medical school, let alone right. the man on the street. So right. you've really taken a very health approach. I'll say, you know, I, I dove into my plantable bag, but um, what came with my bag is also this um, booklet with recipes and explaining nutrients and what I need. And so much of changing one's eating habits, I think, is really education. Maybe you can talk to me about that. Yeah, so totally. So it is education. So I think a lot of, I mean, you you raised a lot of points as well. I mean, mm. we share a similar historical background. I think your, your origins are in Sicilian. Is that yes. correct? Yes. So my, my father was Sicilian and um, I was born in, in Italy and grew up in the UK, but born in Italy. And yeah, and it's changing in Italy as well. But but we, right, the Italians, the Europeans, we're kind of used to, to food and it actually wasn't that complicated. And if we look at the blue zones, those pockets yes. of longevity where people, you know, live well, they live a long time. Food is a major component of that. And and it's about real ingredients, whole grains, um, lots of vegetables, beans, legumes, nuts and seeds. And there was some fish and there was a little bit of meat and a little bit of mozzarella, but it's at the at the outside, right? You know, yes. the skirting, it's not the staple. The staple was largely because of poverty um, that, that people ate a largely vegetable and legume driven diet. So ironically, we find ourselves today in a world where it's about ease and convenience and processed ingredients, um, where the subsidy of those processed ingredients is artificially driving down the price, because as we just saw, those processed ingredients are actually causing a sick care system, they're making yes. us ill, and so it's not the true price of, of food, but rather, I think it's about having people experience going back to basics, going back to real food, and real food 
doesn't necessarily have to be expensive. Beans and legumes and chickpeas are not expensive. Brown rice is not expensive. Yes. Right. Um, and, you know, if we could influence policy to readdress some of the subsidies away from corn and sugar and the soy that's going towards animal feed and subsidizing some of those fresh vegetables so that they're not eight pounds, you know, eight dollars for a, you know, a tub of, of, of tomatoes. Um, we we get people back to to a healthy diet, a real food diet, which isn't complicated. It actually and, it go ahead. Please. No, I was just going to say I think the last thing is and I think our taste buds also have to be reset. And this was partly our philosophy of like just just go with this. I promise you it's going to taste really good for kind of seven to, to 28 days, however you want to do it, because we're so used to kind of sugar in our diet that if you reset, you you begin to taste things again. And we've had clients say, well, I don't really like eggplant. And then they try our eggplant dish and they go, oh, actually, I do like eggplant. And and so it's almost a handholding, trust us, we're going to, this is going to taste really good. It's going to be a wonderful experience. Yes. And I love that you use the word reset and it's in one of your products. So if you choose to do a month, you can. If you choose to do a week, you can. You've got some reset options. Um, maybe I'll That's right. come. It's the come reboot. In. It's the reboot. There's, I think there's a three day cleanse. There's an a la carte box. And then there's the also, programs. Uh, yeah, that's right. And then so a, a reboot. But what I think is so important about this is, you know, refined sugars, you say re refined carbohydrates, they are so deeply addictive. And I find for myself, my own personal experience, it takes me about four days to work that out of my system. And once it's four or five days, I don't crave them anymore. But for those That's first right. four days, it's very hard for me. And I am Italian and I do love eggplant. It's one of my very favorite foods. But it's hard <laughs> to me for me to look at eggplant in that four day period and, and want it, crave it, see the value in it at all. And then after I have these, I'll say drugs for lack of a better expression out of my system on day five, things like bananas and eggplants look good to me again, That's tomatoes, right. you know, That's um, right. one of my favorite snacks is just to cut up a, you know, has to be a good tomato, but cut up a good tomato oh, yes. with olives. And I just have olives and tomatoes together. And that's my own sort of side oh, salad wonderful. and that salt from the olives and a little bit of fat from the olives. It's just so good with the tomatoes. You know, obviously that's kind of the base for tomato sauce anyway. So it's so that's good, right. but I can't see that at all. I'm my, my true vision is clouded when I have had yes. sugar and refined carbs. Right. And that's why, again, we brought together, I mean, essentially we brought together two businesses, one, which is an educational uh, education and behavioral mm -hmm. coaching program. So we actually bring people that do our reboot program, they're assigned their own personal coach. I mean, that, it's kind of pretty cool. It's Who's so there at 10 o'clock at night? Why? Because yeah. that's when the Hagen dars is calling people. Oh. And then that is that is the time that we are busiest. It's 10 o'clock at night. It's the pre-nighttime <gasps> snacking. Like, during the day, people have got it. Like, no, yeah. they know what and they're do. busy during the day. And yeah. they're busy. But it is the biggest time that we are busy is 10 o'clock at night when the Hagen dars is, is calling your name. And so the reboot experience is really at its core. It's, it's exactly what you said, Liz. It's getting people off the sugar and those kind of addictive processed foods and getting them into real foods. Yes, um, I find that amazing. I, I did want to dive into that a little bit more. So what you offer is not only an email every day that helps people in small digestible bites process new information about nutrition that they haven't gotten exactly. their whole life. That could be decades yeah. for some people. Things about fiber, things about complex carbohydrates and their value, things about processed sugar, why it's not good for you, just so that people can start wrapping their minds around like, oh, this thing is actually uh, taking me down a rabbit hole in the wrong way. And now I understand why in terms of refined carbohydrates and sugar, alcohol, et cetera. And, and these things are good for me, carbohydrates, which get such a bad rap. We'll talk about right, that in a right. second. So this kind of re-educating. So you get that. I'm going to throw up another um, JPEG here. So you get an email. This came to my email box. Hopefully you can see it. <laughs> Reboot day 23, talking to me about supplements and explaining them. So every day I would get some nutritional information. Um, but then more than anything, you have this one-on-one -on -one coaching. It's almost unbelievable that this is affordable. Right. How right. does this work that, so you can call this coach any day. I had a coach and I spoke with her once and I loved her, right. but can people call any day? 
Yep, over the 28 days, absolutely, absolutely. I did not know this. And this person, um, does it function part nutritionist, part therapist? So much about food is our, our how we grew up, what we're comfortable with, what we're needing. It's feeling a different need. How does that work? Totally. Totally. It's it's support. It's it, the, one of the biggest things is being there and it's accountability. Now, as you know, Elizabeth, when people join us for a reboot, they sign up for an onboarding call with their coach. So they are assigned a coach um, and they sign up for the onboarding. And that's our chance to get to know you and for you to get to know us as well. So how Plantable fits in with your daily routine. At the moment, we're just doing lunches and dinners, but we're actually building in kind of breakfast and snacks as well. So we we understand your routine. What do you normally have for breakfast? Let, let's talk about you. Let, you know, let's make sure that this kind of fits into your lifestyle. And it is, you know, once you've connected with your coach, there's a voice there. You know that there's someone there. So it's not just this like random person on the mm -hmm. end of a text. And then you can text your coach. So essentially you text a plantable number and that's routed to your personal coach. Oh my gosh. And so that person is always there. And so, you know, often, especially in those early few, early kind of first 10 days, two weeks, when it's the hardest, just knowing that yes. Nadia is there or Kristen is there or Sansa is there to pick up your text is a huge thing because we'll reply back in 30 seconds or a minute. Wow. And often it is, you know what, Elizabeth, I know it's hard, but make yourself a cup of tea, make yourself a cup of chamomile tea, go watch an episode of Netflix and go to bed rather than getting the, the hug and dance out. And that's so back to your question, is it therapy? Is it, It's really, it's support and it's someone there who cares and has got your back. Yeah, it's incredible. And I think most people, perhaps don't realize that this is what Plantable yeah. offers, but That's also true. think that it's going to be cost prohibitive. I mean, this kind of uh, right. Overeaters Anonymous, that is absolutely the wrong phrase, but this sort of eating coach, as yeah. well as the meals delivered to your door that you just, I mean, here, for example, I was eating this before, but of course, very hard to interview and eat at the same time. <laughs> but having Mexican artichoke, Mexican flats, Mexican artichoke flats with um, spinach and artichokes. And you can see whole corn. And, you know, this is a big portion. You can see how big this yeah. portion is. I just threw this in the microwave. So you're talking about convenience right at your doorstep that's nutritious. Right. And a personalized coach. That's I right. can't believe this. Walk us through a little bit of the pricing because I don't think people will believe you. Yeah, well, the pricing comes out to for the reboot program is one hundred and seventy five dollars per week for four weeks. So the total cost of that is seven hundred dollars. Um, and the pricing kind of break, if you want to kind of think about the pricing, it breaks out to be about twelve dollars fifty a meal, just over twelve dollars a meal. And the coaching breaks out to be twenty dollars a week. So, you know, what always struck me is if you go and have an appointment with a, you know, with a, with a nutritionist or something, that nutritionist will sit down with you for half an hour and go, okay, well, here's what you, here's your meal plan. Go one way and have, you know, and I'm generalizing, but it can be if it's a calorie restrictive diet, but, but you've got to then do all the work. And that half hour consultation alone can cost $150. So, um, so what we're doing is saying, look, we're doing the heavy lifting in the kitchen because I don't want I don't want to give you a reason not to do this because you're going to feel so amazing. Yes. Trust yes. me. We're going to do the heavy lifting in the kitchen and then we are there every day to give you the support and the motivation. We also help you with habit change because it, this isn't about willpower. Once you understand addiction to the brain. Yes, um, it's not willpower. And, and dependency and dopamine. It's, it's not. It's understanding how the brain works and replacing it. So, for example, real life example. So. I love my five o'clock glass of red, five, six o'clock glass of red wine. You know, there's nothing I love more than coming in. And, you know, though when, when you cut that out, you know, Monday to Friday, or whatever you say for the special occasion, which is what we say on the reboot, it's, okay, what am I going to do at that six o'clock hour when I, you know, when I come in? So we give people alternatives. Like, it's not the same, but have a glass of fizzy water and pop some edamame pods, which will keep you kind of busy and it's busy. a celebration. So, you understand catalyst trigger like oh this is six o'clock the witching hour you can't ignore that because the voice will get louder and louder and then you combine that with i'm still going to do something that's kind of fun and different so i'm still going to give myself a reward it's just the pathway that's different mm -hmm. so what we've done is taken kind of the science of the brain of habit 
understanding nutrition and brought it all together into one parcel. And, and that's why when you look at our results and that's why we've captured the, the attention of leading medical institutions now that we're doing and we're also doing some clinical trials is because no one has seen these results before because we know academically this is what happens and you follow plant based lifestyle, but it's actually very hard to get people to, to do it and change because normally you're either doing coaching or you're doing meal delivery without the two together. Let me see if I can bring up some of these statistics, folks. You might have to pull out your glasses. No, but I, I want to talk about how people can really see the changes here. So if you go ahead and look, we're talking about, um, and Nadi, perhaps you can help me. Are these statistics for one week or are they for one month? No, I'm sorry. I see it. No, Just this is one, one month. month this you're is looking the reboot. At reduction in blood sugar, reduction in inflammation. This is can all be measured. Reduction in elevated cholesterol, the, your waistline going down, your average weight loss. So, I mean, look at that. 8.9 pounds in a month. Is that and right? That's on, yeah. That's on wow. Now, so I'm talking a little bit about that because I think how if you um, look at how it's broken out is even more interesting. So on average, out of all those people, we collected data for the first year and a half. On average, people lost just under nine pounds, but then we broke it out into BMI categories. So normal BMI, overweight, and, and obese. Oh, and yes, what I see. You see so, so I'm sorry, the writing is very small here, but the normal BMI is kind of people lose about six pounds, you lose about nine pounds, and you lose about, you know, 11, you know, 11 pounds. Now, these are averages, obviously, but what this is saying is it's not massively skewed. It's saying that even all of us, even at a normal BMI, this is the the, the weight loss is coming <laughs> is coming from the improvement in health. Mm -hmm. This isn't about crazy calorie reduction. It's not about going hungry. In fact, we say on the, on on any of our programs, eat if you're hungry, eat hummus and carrots. Also, this is not about going into hunger, but this is about resetting and. Um, the thing that gets me most excited about this, everyone gets excited about the bottom results. Like, oh yeah, I want to lose weight. But Definitely. what gets me really excited are those top results because a one point drop in HGBA1C, which is blood sugar, three month average, takes you, you know, reverses pre-diabetes. We as a nation today, I think 80% of all adults, I forget the exact number, 80% of all adults are pre-diabetic. So you get to become pre-diabetic when your A1C level comes up to like 5.8 and above. So you're pre-diabetic between 5.8 and 6.5. If you're at 6.5 and, and above, you're going to be started on metformin. So in one mm -hmm. month, if you are pre-diabetic, you'll see that 5.8 or that 6 come down to 5.5, 5.6. We get you out. If you're, if you're diabetic, Elizabeth, you'll see that A1C drop two points in one month. We've turned around diet, type two diabetes in three months, we take people. And this is what drives my passion, that we, we don't need to be popping pills. I mean, yeah. some, some of us do need pills, right? And thank the Lord for you know, antibiotics and all of those great things. But these chronic diseases, we don't have to have them. Inflammation now, inflammation is being understood to be the driver of all chronic disease right and inflammation is very interesting because it resides in the adipose tissue so that the fat cells so mm -hmm. as people have more fat they actually become more inflamed and the two kind of fuel it itself uh, we're about to start um, clinical trials with three major cancer hospitals memorial sloan kettering wild cornell and johns hopkins why we're looking at the reduction of Yes, weight, which is a linked factor to, to cancer, but inflammation both in the tissue and in the blood, which has been linked to cancer cancer risk. And below those, and we're also looking at gene expression, by the way. You know, I didn't know this until recently. We're all born with our genes, but we can actually kind of switch them on and off mm -hmm. bit like Christmas tree lights. Mm -hmm. And below that, our secondary outcomes are all of those metabolic markers, you know, the LDL, mm -hmm. the cholesterol, the blood sugar, the weight. It's, it's all one and the same. Sure. And I find that so inspiring that we've got so much more control over our lives, you know, um, that we can we can feel really good and we can reverse disease in as little as 28 days.
Yes, there's so much to unpack right there. So first of all, yes, all of these markers, I'm just summarizing what you've said for people. So all of these markers are just indicators if diabetes or um, heart disease is around the corner for you so that you could reverse chronic disease yeah. with no pills yeah. is amazing, not to mention the financial Genius you know, yeah. benefit to you, but yeah. a life without pills in as small as 28 days because of plants actually reversing with a whole food plant-based diet, which is complex yeah. carbohydrates, folks, not the en enemy, uh, is, is astounding as to what the body can do. Your body America. is such an amazing machine. Oh. I can't believe that, you know, sometimes we're talking about decades of abuse in, in right. terms of eating the wrong things. And that can turn around in 28 days. That to me, I'm forever astounded and, uh, by that. And me too, me too. So the, the body is a miracle. You yes. begin to treat yes. it well and it starts to repair. And Thing. those yeah. results that you saw, those average nine pounds in weight. And again, let's take weight as a proxy to health because okay. what we're seeing is the body becoming more healthy and that's why weight is coming off. In that first week, because we, we've had so many people that have been through our, our reboot program. But in that first week, you typically see weight loss of at the minimum three pounds, but on average, five, six pounds, eight pounds, 12 pounds. So, oh my gosh. You know, in one week, just by eating. It's a, it's a yes, miracle just by eating. and it's yeah. genius. Yes. It's yes. genius. Particularly because often people think eating is the enemy and here you get to eat, like keep you eating eat. it, just eat. keep eating. You're we're, we're Italian. So we're telling you keep eating and it's the That's best right. way to get through that things. Is yeah. Right. yeah um, it's and, and when I discovered that, I really thought I discovered, I mean, now more and more people we're talking about it. It's more known, but it was like a miracle kind of size and I think also you know as women we're always under so much mm. pressure you mm -hmm. know incorrectly so from society but how do we look yes. our weight body image I've tried losing weight I did this diet I put it back on self-loathing depression and yes. all of that it's yes. the mental affliction that it gives us and yes. what liberty and joy that comes from eating and your body just restoring itself to its happy way i call it your happy way when i when i onboard people i say tell me what's your happy way because we all have that it doesn't matter what the scale says yes. it's our happy weight that we want that we feel good at and yes. that's what the body takes you back to and it's really hard to have quality of life if you don't have health and you don't have health if your body's inflamed and your body's inflamed from being overweight. So it's really hard to sort of be your best self for yourself, yep. for your grandkids, for yep. your kids and yep. toddlers, you know, to run them around if you don't right. have health. When are we going to see the results from those clinical trials? We are in about 18 months time, we'll have the, the full results. So we're actually starting with more slim Kettering. Um, next week, they've got a whole lineup wow. of patients that I want to do the clinical trial. Um, it was about to start in March, and then it got closed out and got you know held off with COVID. And sure. then the Wild Cornell and Johns Hopkins should be starting uh, to recruit in early 2021, so early next year. And that's a slightly shorter trial. The MSK one is a six month trial. Um, the Wild Cornell Johns Hopkins is a three month one. So we'll see those results kind of catching up with the Morris and Kettering. Uh, so I have two questions along the health lines before we break down some of the business things. Um, yeah. Way early, and I ed encourage everybody else, you have a doctor here, you know, so please just shout out your health questions and I can put them on the screen. Um, so early in our interview, you said it's not about calorie counting and I still keep my eye on the calorie. Tell me, am I wasting my time? Um, you could free yourself up from calorie counting and really? not be bogged down by it. Yes. So if you eat a, so I think that the simple answer to give you is not all calories are treated equally sure, in the same way. Sure, I'm, I'm down so, with that. So what the body does with a hundred calories, let's talk about the protein bar because the protein bar drives me crazy. Okay. You know, the 200 calorie protein bar that has sugar in it, the, the, we, we take that in, um, we brain perceive sweetness, um, the glucose enters the bloodstream, brain speaks to the pancreas that says, release insulin, release insulin, and off the insulin goes, and it takes the glucose out of the blood sugar, and you know what it does with it? Stores it as fat, there it goes. So it is stored, and then our blood sugar drops, 
our brain then says because it's lacking the nutrients that are you know that a 200 calories of of you know a high fiber 200 calories would give you we'll come to that in a second so it says hunger eat more and it prompts us to eat more but those two that energy in that in that bar 200 calories has been stored it's like boom and it sits there and it sits there around the tummy and on the thighs and especially around the tummy because it's sugar um when you have 200 calories of real food complex carbohydrates are loaded with fiber fiber does a lot of things fiber is kind of like love fiber love, love you fiber, fiber. It's like this solution love you proper fiber, My not gosh. Inulin that they add to the cereal yes. right. the fiber actually keeps the insulin low so what happens is that 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 there's a slow release of glucose into the bloodstream so you don't get the insulin spike you don't get the crash so you don't get the hunger and actually the fiber acts as both it tends to be insoluble and soluble and actually stops the body absorbing as it goes further into the gut all of some of the energy and so those 200 calories from a nut that you get or something that's high fiber are not treated in the same way of the body um, would treat 200 of a processed um, of processed calories, processed processed food calories, and so when you eat a whole food plant based diet, because of the fiber, because of the real green, for a start you get full more easily. So it's hard to overeat. Now you could overeat. You know, if you're going to sit there in front of a jar of cashew nuts, right, to your point of calories, and like woof down a whole thing, yeah. It's a lot of fat. It is a lot of calories. But if you start to listen to your body, your body tells you. And again, that's part of this reboot experience is to reset the metabolic mm -hmm. cycle. Because, you know, that first cycle I described with the, the energy, the insulin and the crash, we call that the crappy food cycle because it's actually prompting, hu prompting hunger. When you eat a whole food, real food diet, that's called the real food cycle. You have this slow release of energy, you have leptin. Your brain stops saying after two hours, you're hungry, eat more. I came to this country 12 years ago and I was like looking around, like, why is everyone snacking? Like, it's not oh, an right. Italian thing to snack. Yes, I see. Mm -hmm. I, and so, yeah, I, I love what you're saying there. Um, first of all, I, I'm just kind of breaking this down again because you've said so many things and I want people to be able to retain this information. So basically, um, you really want to get your fiber more than anything. Everyone's focused on protein, but you really <laughs> want your fiber. And just an FYI, folks, and I did not know this myself, so don't feel bad. I was embarrassed when I first learned it, but I think it is intentionally um, misconstrued for people to misunderstand. Meat has no fiber. So you Zero. have this super long intestinal tract, and then you have this thing, this dead thing sitting in your system. It has no fiber to move through it, which is why people can still feel like I used to feel heavy from meat two days after the fact of eating it, because I'm not saying I wasn't hungry. I still had more food, but I just didn't feel right even two days after having meat. Yeah. So meat has no fiber. And what you're talking about here is how fiber pulls cholesterol out of the bloodstream. I mean, I, I defer to you. You're obviously the doctor, but it can do so many things to um, reduce how your body processes sugar so it doesn't just that's store right. it. And that's point number two. You're saying that if you don't have high fiber and you're just getting this processed sugars, processed carbohydrates, all your body's going to do is store it. You're not going to use it. So you're basically doing yourself this enormous disservice by just packing on the pounds because your body's right. not using it. And so then you're that's just right. filling it with more, which is, you know, so frustrating if you're trying to watch your weight. Uh, okay. So I can relieve myself from counting all the calories. Maybe yeah, I should be free. Maybe I should rephrase that question. Um, let's say you are doing a whole foods plant-based diet. And I encourage everybody to get your questions in here because I'm throwing in my questions to get me through um, my COVID snacking, which I do do. Uh, okay. So let's say you're following a whole food plant-based diet. Should you still say, you know, for example, one of my very favorite snacks, and we'll get into this, the two of us about healthy snacking. One of my very favorite snacks is air popped popcorn. And I'll spray Bragg's amino acids so that I don't have to do olive oil. And I'll save even yep. Italian. And I know that olive oil has some good qualities, but it's the calories that I'm packing in. You see, I'm watching my calories. And then I'll even say to myself sometimes, oh, maybe I shouldn't have nutritional yeast on it. So usually I air pop the popcorn, spray it with Bragg's amino acids, and then I have, I sprinkle it with nutritional yeast. Yep. But nutritional yeast packs on calories too. So sometimes I say, oh gosh, maybe I just should sort of keep it under wraps. Am I overthinking? You were overthinking it. I mean, <laughs> nutritional yeast is amazing. It's, yeah. it's actually, it's really good for you. And it's not, it's not a high source of, of calories at all. I mean, it, it, compared to the nutrients that it packs, it, 
it's it's wonderful for you. Um, and you know, if it's high quality corn kernels, have at it, right? You know, you don't need oh, that many it. to have a little thing. Um, I will say, I mean, this is what I say to you know to to people that come through our program is. Think about if you're hungry, right? You know, is it hunger or is it boredom? And and okay, when boredom. we're going through this, like, co- well, who are we kidding? Co- it's boredom. Co- exactly, exactly. <laughs> so just recognize it, embrace it, and you know, maybe just scale back a little bit. Yeah, if you're not hungry, it just it's wonderful to listen to your body, right? To say, you know, do I really want it? And I actually think that's an um, added benefit. We're not really talking about it clinically here, but I do think um, anecdotally that that's a benefit is when you get rid of the foods that, for lack of a better expression, make you kind of crazy because they're addictive, you can be in better touch with your own body, its needs, easier to listen to it, et cetera, and all the needs you get, which is why I love this program so much. Okay, so you've talked about so many things that are really tailored to the individual. You're getting that coaching and all the informational emails that come, and then, of course, you have the meals already made for you that are so tasty. Do you think you'll ever get to the point where people can take their blood at home and send that blood sample into someone like yourself and you can say, oh gosh, you're short in B12 and vitamin D and, you know, eat more blueberries or, or what That's have right. you. I, 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 that the coming? short answer to that is yes, it's coming. It's coming. Um, when is it coming? You know, we, well, I mean, we've been looking into this a while. Um, there are state regulations over mm. what at home tests you can do. So, for example, um, you can test, you know, those that that panel that we were looking at, you know, CRP, your inflammation and your LDL, um, if you don't live in New York. So those home testing kits, they won't send them to, to New York State. I, I don't know whether Quest Diagnostics or whoever yeah. it is, someone has got, uh-huh. you know, some sort of you know, control over that. But that personalized testing is on on its way. And I would love to be able to to kind of incorporate that with what we're doing. I would love to see that. Just um, as we talk about convenience being such an important part of this whole process, just would avoid going to the lab and going to the do- getting the doctor's yeah. written script to go to the lab yeah. for the thing. It just seems like this could be really um, rectified right here. There is a question. How about coconut water blended with some hemp hearts and half a date? What about that Ooh. for a snack? Wow. Sounds um, a bee. I, I like how you roll. Sounds a bee rolls, rolls well. Um, I think that's wonderful. I love coconut water. It's full of electrolytes. It's really good for the body. Um, hemp hearts are a great source of, you know, good for you protein, lot of fiber in them. And I'm a bit of, I always tend to keep the, the sugar low. So the half a date if you're making a big thing should be, should be great. But that's a wonderful drink to be able to have. So you think even, not you think, but you know that even dates, even though they're natural and filled with fiber, too much sugar, is that what you're saying? Would you say the same about bananas? I would say, so again, I think it, you know, part of the reboot is about resetting people, right? Mm. So getting them off that that kind of sugar sweet pain. So when you're on the reboot, we really are helping people to keep that, you know, blood sugar level down so not so you have a tendency of some people as they're as they're missing the sugar to go all the way through to just wanting to eat a huge amount of fruit um so we're always you know advocate being you know, mediterranean style in your fruit right you know after a meal if you want a piece of fruit you know wonderful you know an apricot or two um but i wouldn't necessarily advocate having you know you can have smoothies with a lot of you know ben- bananas and pineapple and all of those things and it's a lot of sugar for the body to, to handle and it will process it in the same it will spike your insulin so um keep fruit moderate you know normal in check i i thought fruit with all its fiber was um sort of like you get a hall pass there you do as long as you're not munching on it all day long you yeah. know you have a couple of pieces a day but you know it's a pretty couple of pieces a day Okay, so we've talked all about the the program and what you have and what you're offering. Maybe you can talk to me sort of really from the business standpoint. Um, I think there are a lot of challenges to this kind of business. And I've been told that meal delivery services, not just in getting things there such that they haven't spoiled, et cetera, but also keeping the price points. I mean, your price points are so very reasonable. We've talked about those previously. I'm wondering if you can talk to me about some of the challenges of a meal delivery service. Um. I mean, it is it is complex. You've got a lot of different moving parts. The actual, the production of the meals, we have our own facility in, in, in Brooklyn, a commercial kitchen in Brooklyn. 
that's the easy bit. If it were just that, it'd be like, I'll do this yeah, all nothing, day long. Yeah. That's nothing. Um, um, it is, it's packaging. It is kind mm. of distribution. Um, it is environment. So we want to be as eco-friendly as possible. Sure. So we want all of our, you know, our liners to be recyclable, our boxes, all those things. Um, we use dry ice um, because we prefer that as a coolant as opposed to these big kind of ice packs and blocks. And then what do you do with those? And then you get the summer months and it gets really hot. So you have to add more dry ice. It's, it, is, yeah. it is non-trivial as a business. Um, however, um, I think there's a need for it. There's a need to make Definitely. it, you know, easier. I also think, you know, as we look at our kind of route and our expansion today, we're fully prepared meals. Um, in a future, I think we might be um, staples, right? Um, yeah. We make a wonderful bolognese sauce. Uh, mm -hmm. We pack our meals with a lentil pasta. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you may well be seeing our bolognese sauces on shelves soon um, oh, and great. our pasta and providing staples that people at home can buy in the grocery store or possibly online where they can then create these meals at home so i want to show every sorry i want to show everyone let's see if i can get it sorry uh because i haven't tried this yet is this one of your um is that the marcella? green lentil pasta is this That's one of your specialties that you guys do because i never had lentil pasta before it is amazing. So lentil pasta, we normally serve, I don't know which sugo you got. Oh, you got it with probably the eggplant sugo. Eggplant. Yeah, I'm we, we, make, we, we make various sugo. We have my zialina sugo, which is my aunt's sugo recipe. We also make a bolognese sauce, um, which is to die for. But we serve it with lentil pasta for two reasons. One, back to those carbohydrates, right? So one of the, the, the metrics we look at is and this is really interesting for, for the viewers, is the ratio of grams of carbohydrates to fiber, right? For everything that we were talking oh, about, because yeah. the fiber dampens that, that, that glucose kind of hit. And so what we want to maintain, so we're not anti-carbohydrates, we have to have the fiber alongside of it. So we look for a ratio of carbohydrates divided by fiber to be around five or less. Hmm. And lentil, if you look at normal pasta, the carbohydrate to fiber ratio oh, I may be making this up, but it's closer to 15 or 20. Whereas that lentil pasta, it, it's high in protein, plant protein, it's filled with fiber, and it's so satiating. And so we complement our sugi with a lentil pasta. So it's a really, it doesn't look huge, but once you've actually eaten it, you should try it. Let me know with the lentil pasta, with your eggplant sugo, you're full. Okay, well, so this is how the behavior and changing the behavior makes such an important difference. So I, of course, immediately went for these kind of things. So this is the Mexican artichoke flats because it's so big. And so when I saw the pocket of pasta, because again, I'm Italian and I'm used to eating pasta, I thought, oh, this lentil pasta is never going to fill me up. But you're saying that it's so much more filling that I just want to yeah. show everybody again that because uh, it has so much more fiber. So you're saying I got to try this. Okay, I'm all about try it. Try it with the egg. Sugo. Okay. Sugo on top. okay. I'm all about it because I've never had uh, lentil pasta before. So that's so fun. Um, okay. Well, great. So I've learned already so much. And basically, I'm going to relieve myself of calorie counting as long as it's whole <laughs> food plant based. So that, that's right. that's that's you've done right. me a huge favor there. Um, as sort of some of my exit questions for you that I'd love to ask at the end of every interview. So clearly, this is whole foods plant based. Yes. Well, maybe before I get into my exit questions, how many people stick with the program? So let's say you do a reboot and it's a month. How many people can you keep, maybe not with your program, but stay whole foods plant-based? How much behavior um, do you actually change? So we actually did a recent survey um, and we polled those people that had done a reboot and said, um, how many, you know, from what you achieved after the reboot, kind of where are you now? Do you have any lasting behavior, lasting change from, mm -hmm. you know, where you were pre-reboot to, to where mm -hmm. you are today? And I think um, the number was something like 80% reported to having had long-term change. And then of those 80%, 86% attributed it to plantable, so to, to, to what they learned on, on the reboot. All so, right, folks. It's pretty, here's, here's, Here's the key to success, Elizabeth. It's it's 
if we get people, I think your viewers will, 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 will not want to hear this, but if we get people off sugar in those 28 days, we're done. Because once you get people off the sugar and the processed food, you start to, and, and introduce them into this different way of eating where it's not spiked with the sugar, it tastes real, um, then you change your palate and everything, and you change your hunger level. So everything just gets reset. And then it's effortless. So, mm -hmm. so it really is those 28 days, the, pro, you know, the, the, the chips, the bagels, and the sugar, uh, and the sweeteners get them out and your life becomes free and i have known people say to me oh but you know and th this is where addiction comes in yeah it is addictive I, I set up this program because once i learned about the addiction um i drew back on my idiotic kind of 20s and 30s when i started smoking at the age of 21 because of my idiot boyfriend got me into the smoking and um smoked like a trooper kind of social smoker you know but you know could get through easily a packet in a night some nights and despite the fact that my father died at age 10 of an aneurysm brought on early be provoked because of smoking and my mother is dying of breast cancer um i know smoking is not smart i know i'm headed towards cancer but i found it really hard to stop until i read alan carr's the easy way to stop smoking and i learned about the addictive voice and the brain and so um once once you start to you know and and the reason why i couldn't stop smoking is because i always thought my i'd have a life of deprivation like how can i ever enjoy myself i'm always going to miss the cigarette but as non-smokers which I, I am proudly i've been for a long long time but we don't look at people shivering outside of a building in the middle of winter and go oh i really miss that right we non-smokers don't feel deprived it's that transition period. And that is the message I want to give people about sugar and processed food that, trust me, if you get through 28 days, you won't feel deprived. It will open up freedom. You're gonna feel great. Um, and it's not to say you can't ever have it again. It just stops controlling you. You choose when to have it. You keep it in check. And that I think is, is wonderful. So, um, you know, the complementary, the complement of having a whole food plant-based lifestyle alongside eliminating the processed food. And this, this is an important point because today's impossible burger with the potato bun or Oreos or French fries could, you know, are theoretically vegan meals, but that is not health. That is not what we're talking about here. So a 28-day whole food plant-based diet is what we're talking about resetting our behavior. So again, so much to unpack here. Uh, again, what she's talking about is the food in combination with the counseling or the resetting of your behaviors and the resetting of your mindset, not just resetting of your palate so that you're not addicted to sugar and processed carbs again, but the resetting of your mindset rather than you were focused on this life of deprivation that you were going to have if you couldn't have, you know, cancer sticks right. 20 a night. That's oh right. my gosh. So, you know, we're talking about just resetting how you think now to all of us now in today's day, that sounds crazy. Just, right. you know, who would say like, oh my God, my life isn't full if I can't have cigarettes. So, you know, it's about changing your mindset. So you're not focusing right. on what you're not having. You're focusing on all that you are having, which is, you know, huge amounts of food that are tasty and healthy and filled with complex carbohydrates and that are good for you. Um, yeah. I will add to that. I know you said like, just get rid of the processed food and just get rid of the sugars. But I, I really will add to that. Uh, get rid of dairy and get rid of meat. Um, That's right. Not, not health foods, just completely yeah. mismarketed yeah. to you. They are not health foods. Meat has no fiber. We've had long conversations right. about fiber and um, how that's not, you need fiber. You need fiber more than protein. Whoever that's died right. of not having enough protein, <laughs> particularly in the United States, whereas people die, you saw the statistics, I'm going to throw it up again. People die all the time in the United States from not having enough fiber. These chronic diseases are caused from not having enough fiber being That's overweight right. and uh, getting cancer often That's and, right. uh, you know, high blood pressure, et cetera, high cholesterol. So, you know, lots of people are dying from not having enough fiber. No one ever died That's from right. not having enough That's protein. Right. So 
Uh, so very fascinating. Okay, I do have some exit questions for you, but maybe since we're yeah. going back and forth, I was hoping we could maybe share a little bit. What are your top three healthy snacks that you tell people to do when they've got that snacking craving and you can't feed them with processed food, but they can't just right. ignore it? So what are your three go-tos? So um, I love hummus with carrot sticks. Love hummus. I always have some in the fridge. You stole um, one. That was going to be one of mine. Okay, go ahead. Oh, <laughs> um, I love Ezekiel bread. So again, kind of bread that has, yeah. um, it's wonderful bread. It's the bread that we recommend. And I have people, I have, I'll put some avocado on it. I always top it with, I'm really into tagine at the moment. It's like Me that too. Mexican. Love oh, it. Love, love it. it. Yeah. And I throw, um, I normally used to throw kind of baby spinach on top, but I'm really into wild arugula right now. I'm having an arugula moment. Um, and so I put, and I often have that for breakfast. That's my breakfast each morning. But if I'm kind of hungry, I'm in between going somewhere, I'll have one of those. Um, I'm also a fan of unsweetened nut butters. So either an almond butter or a, a peanut butter, if you're going to have that. It's great also with an apple. So if you're yes. looking for that chocolate hit, mm. have an apple, like one apple. <laughs> Oh with a tablespoon of unsweetened almond butter, you have it together. It tastes like you're having something chocolatey. It's so good. Yes, it's so good. I, I completely agree. So Ezekiel bread. Have you ever heard of a German bread called just a fitness bread? Do you know what I'm talking about? I'll send no. you a picture later. It's a dark one. Dark one. It's the dark one. It's the dark one. It's. I love this bread. It's so dense. It's so. You just see the seeds right there. It's. I love amazing. it. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing. And that is another example. Example, right? It's not to say people say, Oh, I can't eat bread. Yeah, you can. You can't just eat this type of bread and not the others. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The good high fiber, not processed breads. You were talking about um, getting rid of processed carbohydrates. And I'll say for me, cereal, boxed cereal has never been a good option. If I start with boxed cereal and the, you know, even something as simple as Rice Krispies, cornflakes, etc., it's already so processed that my sugar spikes and I have cr sugar cravings the whole day. Yep. And so you're for, hungry at 10 o'clock, I bet. You know, you have that and boom. Yeah. That's right. That's right. No, cereal. So again, you know, we help people. Like if you're a cereal person, here's an oatmeal recipe. If you're a bagel person, here's the Ezekiel toast to buy with the avocado and da, da, da. So yes. you know, if you're a smoothie person, that's great. But here's a recipe that's not full with the brim with pineapple and mango juice and bananas, but it's got, a, it's got half a banana and half an apple and lots and lots of veggies. So it's about replacing as opposed to saying thou shalt never have these again. Yes, I understand. So um, one of my favorite go-tos is half an avocado, half a banana, and half a sweet potato. And I put it in the blender Ooh. and that's my smoothie. I'm telling you people, it's so gosh darn good. Okay, that's one of my go-tos. And then um, hummus and cucumber, but you know, we kind of talked about that. And then I talked about my air pop popcorn with Bragg's and nutritional that's yeast. Nice. That's always a go-to. And then I wonder if you will approve of this one. So I call this the original protein bar. When I'm on a plane or I know I'm going hiking, I take a date and I do like sweets. Mm, I do like <laughs> a date and I stuff it with a salty cashew. And for me, it's like the original protein bar because it's got fiber, it's got fat, it's got salt, it's got sugar, yeah. but it's yeah. all, you know, with fiber and whole foods. And I mean, it's, I'm packing yeah. the calories for sure there, but I don't know. Well, it really depends how many you eat of them, you know. Well, yeah. That's great. Well, to that as well, I forgot one of my favorites is the Go Raw Trek mix. So at Trader Joe's, they sell them in prepackaged bags. Oh, We've yeah. actually started doing them as well. So it's got a few raisins in it just for that kind of sweetness. <laughs> um, oh, just for that sweetness. And then, um, but, and then it's just raw nuts. Without yeah. the roasted, without the salt that makes you crave them more and more. But, it, you know, it'll fill you up. Yes, so good. It's all about um, not feeling deprived. Again, we're back to that mental yes. component of it. Obviously, everyone can see plantable.com is the website that's scrolling across the screen and has been for a while. Okay, well, thank you so much for those uh, snack tips. In fact, I'll say if this is your kind of gig and you're trying to switch your mindset, of course, go to Plantable. Get on the reboot program for 28 days, folks. Oh. But if not, um, if you can't do that or you're working your way to it, there are shorter programs. Again, go to plantable.com. But I am all also doing a jumpstart your plant-based life class on August Ooh. 8th. So anybody can go to that and you can sign up for my class um, August 8th. It's just for three hours, but I've got lots of ways to 
pull the bad food out of your cupboards so it's, it's not tempting you. A lot of this game That's is right. mental. Pull out the bad That's food. Right. We put in the good food. We put in you know the right shopping list and some easy recipes and some fun snack That's tips. Right. And um, I mean, I'm only a three hour class. So you know, if you are needing some tips and tricks, take my class. Of course, go to Plantable if you want to really reboot your whole system. Okay, so um, so much of what you do, obviously Plantable. So how much of what you do is whole foods plant based. Um, with that in mind, what are your predictions for this space in the next three to five years? I think it continues to become more and more prominent. Um, I worry a little bit about what big food is going to do to plant based. Um, you do. How they, mm. well, in the in how we saw what they've done with protein. And so in anything that we see with protein is equates to good health. Um, and mm. we know that that's not necessarily the case. Um, and I think that, um, you know, plant-based eating will become more ubiquitous, which is great, but I would, we've always come from a point of view of kind of, of health. So again, using the example of Oreos being plant-based, you know, we're going to start to see plant-based Oreos, good for your health. And that's going to, big food is going to try and, you know, take that and run with it in order to get the consumer to buy more and more of food that's actually not, not good for them. Um, I think, you know, I don't know. It's very timely. I don't know. You know, let's all hope that we find an end to, to COVID and this pandemic that, mm. that we're in soon. And who knows what's to, to follow on the back of that. But I think um, as we've kind of sat in our homes or large in our homes over the last four years, um, uh, four years, four, four months, feels like that, four months, um, that lifestyle does change. And maybe this is a good chance for us to kind of reset also in our ways and look after ourselves mm -hmm. and move towards more kind of real food. We have time. Um, We've seen already, you, you know, you mentioned it a couple of times, um, obesity. I, I want to leave people with the, with the kind of the knowledge that it's it's really about also inflammation. So one can be, you know, a normal BMI but be inflamed, and one can be heavy BMI but be perfectly healthy. Mm -hmm. So I want to see, and I think we will start to see more lifestyle medicine with a plant-based infrastructure coming to the forefront we're already we're talking with insurance companies that are very oh. interested in in meals as and, and testing us doing trials with us meals as a prescription uh, to reverse disease and i think we're at the beginning stages of that but i think um that that needs to take place because if those results came from a pill everyone would be doing it and i think the cost savings that we will undoubtedly need to bring in uh, with those companies, those payers that are progressive, they will begin to see the benefit and Plantable should be subsidized. Plantable with those results should be on prescription and should be subsidized. It's funny because you worry about the pushback from the large corporations about getting continued unhealthy foods into the system, even if they're plant-based, such as Twizzlers or Oreos or something. I worry about pharmaceuticals stopping this kind of progress with getting a plant-based, whole food, plant-based diet uh, subsidized or um, part of a healthy insurance program. Do you, do you worry about that? Um, I think, no, I, yes, is, is the answer. I think big pharma is not incentivized to make chronic disease go away anytime soon. Big food isn't incentivized to stop us processing more and more crappy food. Um, so I think it has to be driven by the consumer. It's mm -hmm. a movement that is taking place from the ground up and with some progressive medical institutions. And I said, if we can get the progressive payers to come on board, corporates, you know, I, I, I love the fact that you are all about, you know, a healthy you and a happy planet. That's also, you know, our mantra as well. Um, and the corporate C-suite now is under pressure to be shown to be more sustainable. Mm -hmm, and as we saw, a plant-based, a plant-centric lifestyle is the str single strongest lever we have to address the health epidemic and the environment that we have. And so I think we're going to start to see more corporates coming about 
a plant-centric lifestyle for environment and sustainability issues um, and having that trickle down across the corporate, which will also indirectly be helping their healthcare costs. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we're going to start to see more and more of that. And I think the consumer wants to be empowered um, oh, yes. and wants to be informed. Yes, I can't agree more. I think this is really the time of the consumer. I think one of the things that COVID has done is not only show us that, you know, meat-borne pandemics come from meat, uh, but also that there's really no direction from the top, whether you're from the right or the left, that it's hard to really put any trust in any of top level politicians, regardless of which party you're in. And most people are starting to advocate for themselves. And that really does start with your health. And I think this is very much the time of the consumer. I would love to say that big corporations are getting on board for sustainability, but I really think that they're getting on board because they're doing the math and they're saying we're going from 7 billion people to 10 billion people, but we're not getting more land and we're not getting more water. So they're doing the business equation and they're saying, this is what the consumer wants and this is how we make more money because you're not gonna be able to feed 10 billion people the way we do it now. Just not an economic equation that's possible. That's right. And that actually, when you pulled up that slide about kind of health, the Eat Lancet Commission report, and I would I would counsel anyone to read, there's a summary report on the internet, is exactly that. How do we feed 10 billion people? in 2050 and how do we meet the 2030 sustainability un sustainability development goals how by bringing people into a plant centric life yes it's the only way actually it's the and it it's is. a known proven thing so you don't have to go and study it and try to figure it out we have that's the right. answer we actually have it how rare that's is that right. you that, know that's I, right i want to riff on one more thing that you were saying about the future and that you're a little concerned about big corporations going the unhealthy route i also see this trend towards very whole food, plant-based, healthy, finally making its way into the supermarket. So I think you're going to see a lot more frozen options that have a, a healthy uh, uh, bend to them. And I wondered if plantable might even get into that area. I think we, we might. <laughs> okay, well then, stay tuned for part two. I think stay that's what tuned. you're saying there. Okay, so yeah. there'll be another interview soon. Okay, these uh, questions are sort of short on our way out. Uh, you know, so much has changed in the last four months. You mentioned, let alone the last five years that you've had plantable. Uh, if you can dial it back a little bit, what do you wish you knew 10 years ago that you know now? Um, I wouldn't have changed it, but... I, if I'd known how difficult it is to have essentially two companies, two kind of business units kind of brought into one, like the education and the food and everything, I, I underestimated how how mm. challenging it is to run those two businesses. Um, so that is, is, is one. That's from a kind of a business point of view. Um, <laughs> oh, I don't know if everyone can see these. Like, yes, notes. we can all see it. So Tom wants oh, you to come back because we're learning so much from I, you. I so, so I'd Tom love to come back. back. Um, I um, I don't know. I mean, I think that that's the only one. That's a good I, one. Okay. I love I love what what we do. I love changing lives. I love being at the forefront. We're going to push the medical frontiers. Yes, I love all of that. You're moving um, the needle for people, the planet, and animals. So I'm grateful for that. Uh, okay, if you're having a bad day and you're not moving the needle as much as you would like, is there a phrase that you say to yourself to get yourself back in the mental mindset of like, let's just keep going? <laughs> um. No, there's no phrase that I say, but as I said, my, my mother passed away now about 25 years ago. So, I, you know, I lost both my parents and I think I get my, I think I get my, my grip from her. She was a tough woman. She lost her husband at age 40. She had two little kids and mm. she was strong. And I sometimes, you know, when we have those really crappy days, I kind of feel her inside of me and she's like, Dai Nadia, yeah, she said, speak oh, yeah. Italian to me. Dai Nadia, che ce la fai, ce la fai, you'll do it, you'll, you'll be okay. Yeah. So, I hear her voice, I hear her voice. It says, yeah, uh, I love that, I love that. And I, I, um, I didn't really fully realize that you were born in Italy. I thought maybe that you were here first. So I'd love to hear that your Italian roots and um, all the good cooking folks, everybody, we all know it comes from Italy. So that's just a <laughs> bonus when we get you. It has been such a joy to have you here. And I must say, I feel very silly now. I was so excited to bring you on that I didn't even tell people really what they're dealing with when they have you on my show. I'm sorry to be reading this at the end, but you have an undergraduate degree in chemistry from King's College in London and a PhD 
PhD in quantum chemistry. You did refer to that earlier from St. Catherine's College and prior to founding Plantable. You were a managing director at Goldman Sachs in London. No slouch are you. Thank you for doing <laughs> all that you do. I really do appreciate it. Oh, thank you, Elizabeth. You you have done amazing things. You are rocking it and you are at the forefront of all of this. So well, thank you. And thank you for having me on your show. It's been such a delight and a pleasure. I do hope that you will come back. It is such an exciting time. And uh, together, folks, we are all making a difference. Dr. Nadia Pinavaya, I so appreciate having you here. Everybody, you know what to do now. Go to plantable.com, get the reboot program, and we'll <laughs> let me know how it goes. Reach out to me at elizabethalfano.com. Let me know how it goes. If you missed any of this, it will be on iTunes and iHeartRadio and Spotify, all the podcast platforms in about three to four days. And then, of course, it'll go to Economist Magazine, the vegan business magazine that I love so much. It'll be out in about three or four weeks. And of course, you can always go to my website, elizabethalfano.com to get this interview all over again, because there is so much to learn. Everybody, plantable.com. It's what you need to get if you're thinking you want to reboot. Dr. Nadia, please come back and thank you for all thank you, you do. Oh, I will love to come back. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you. My it's been a pleasure. pleasure. My pleasure. Okay, Dr. Nadia, don't go away. Everybody else, I will see you tomorrow for Awesome Vegans. See you tomorrow, everybody. Stay put, Dr. Nadia.